Nottingham Forest have long been a sleeping giant of English football. Officially the oldest current club in the EFL, having been founded in 1865, Forest were the best side in Europe as recently as 1980, winning back-to-back -back European Cups under Brian Clough to put them level with Juventus and Chelsea for continental silverware. But poor appointments and an exodus of stars including Teddy Sheringham and Roy Keane saw the team diminish throughout the 90s, dropping out of the Premier League in 1999 and failing to win promotion since, while upheaval behind the scenes has led to a succession of 19 permanent managers at the club in the last 22 years. But after appointing former Swansea boss Steve Cooper in September 2021, the good times have finally started to reappear at the city ground. Under Cooper's predecessor, Chris Hewton, Forrest started the season with one win, six losses and a draw, taking 0.5 points per game. But since then, they've picked up 22 wins, five losses and nine draws with Cooper at the helm, shaking out to 2.1 points per game. If they'd been this good from the start of the season, they'd be on 92 points right now, top of the league and headed for the Prem. But as it is, the club is guaranteed a playoff spot for the first time since 2011. While they've also earned a reputation as one of the most entertaining sides in the championship, as well as conquering Arsenal and Leicester City in a highly impressive FA Cup run which only came to an end at the hand of Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Having finished 8 points above relegation last year, Forrest are 45 from the drop zone in 21-22 and have made stars of Jed Spence, James Garner and Brennan Johnson. So who is Steve Cooper and how did he resuscitate this dying club? And how are Forrest taking shape both on and off the field? On today's FD Explained, we find out. You might expect that such a huge improvement in play would be accompanied by a massive shift in the stats. But at the time of writing, Forrest's underlying numbers don't quite match the eye test. The side is neither a pressing monster with the lowest number of high turnovers in the championship, nor do they dominate possession with their 50.6% share of the ball barely up from 49.8% last year. And in some ways, Cooper is clearly benefiting from some overperformance at both ends. His team have scored 72 from 66 expected goals, and in defence, they're so far above what the stats would predict, they're practically in orbit. With 38 goals conceded from 53 expected, and a league-high 80% save percentage for keeper Bryce Samba, quite possibly a product of his talent, with the Congolese stopper also exceeding expectations last season, but not the kind of thing that lasts forever. However, the fundamentals are there, and there's good reason to expect that over time the stats will come to match the play, rather than the other way around. Samba may be in hot form, but he's clearly good, and the team in front of him does well to limit the demands made of him, with the move to a 3-4-1-2 formation not only giving them another centre-half, but also two central midfielders, one attacking mid, and two forwards all stationed in the middle, meaning opponents have to play through enormous amounts of pressure to get anywhere. As a consequence, they're only allowing opponents 10.8 shots per game, a sharp contrast to the first two months of the season, which cost Chris Hewton his job, when Forrest conceded 12.6 attempts on their goal each match, meaning Cooper's work has taken them from 19th in the championship to 8th by this metric. It's a good start. Their own shots are better too. 40% of their attempts come from outside the box, which, while still high, is an improvement on last year's 43%. They've developed into one of the best counter-attacking teams in the league, with only Coventry managing more direct attacks and only three sides netting more goals from swift breaks, and you can see this clearly on the field, with the man on the ball always supported by runners taking set routes into space. And they're much less reliant on swinging balls, hopefully into the box, dropping from a massive 22 crosses a game last season to 15 this term, with the result that now only 11% of their shots are headed, down from 17%. If it's hard to get a handle on all this, here's the simplest way to look at it. They've gone from getting 2.9 shots on target a game, 22nd of the 24 sides in the championship, to 4.4 a game, fourth best in the league. And with two games left of the campaign, they've already created 14 expected goals more than they did across the whole of the 2020-21 season. Cooper has turned a woeful attacking side into one deserving of a playoff spot. The three at the back has helped here too. That 3-4-1-2 squeezes play into the centre, leaving the flanks open for quick switches. And as soon as Forrest win the ball, they look to spring their wing backs and sweep into the danger zone with 78% of their attacks advancing down the flanks, joint most in the division, and 16 goal and assists from all their wide men. In a division as competitive as the champ, enough smart tweaks can make a world of difference, and Forrest now look like one of the most exciting, coherent, and fluid teams in the second tier. 
But if the statistical and tactical story is still emerging, the impact of Cooper's work off the field is crystal clear. It seems then that the stats, while clearly trending upwards, don't tell the whole story. So it's worth listening to what those who know Cooper say he brings. And overwhelmingly, they answer with two ideas, togetherness and attention to detail. If the first sounds straightforward, now Forrest have found their groove, it could have been very different. Of the 13 players to have over 1,000 minutes for Forrest in the league this year, five arrived this season, and eight of the 13 overall are 25 or younger, meaning the manager needed to get the squad working as one while helping inexperienced players adapt to the division. Fortunately, that's a strength of Cooper's. Having spent five years in Liverpool's academy and led England's under-17s to glory at the 2017 Youth World Cup, with a squad including Foden, Sancho, Guerhi, Smithrow, and Conor Gallagher. And so it's perhaps no shock of the 10 most used under-22s in the championship this term, three of them are at Forest. From the start, the boss has been keen to involve all the players in his thinking, holding meetings with every member of the squad when he first arrived to get their ideas on the issues at the club, a theme that's continued across the campaign. With defender Steve Cook telling The Athletic, he might as well have a rotating door in his office because there's players in and out of there so often. That means players are empowered to give their opinions on how they should be used, and Cooper is attentive to small changes that can make all the difference. Brennan Johnson began the season splitting his time between attacking mid and the left wing under Hewton and delivered just three goal contributions in eight games. But he now hasn't featured on the left since November and under Cooper's guidance has steadily moved higher and higher, now predominantly appearing as a centre forward and as a consequence, he's now on 15 goals and 10 assists for the season. Top of the squad in both categories, a staggering return for a 20-year-old in his first real championship campaign. Acting as one team with one purpose has become a non-negotiable, with Cooper going as far as demanding that all 11 players on the field celebrate together each time Forrest score. But it isn't simply the mentality that has shifted. Cooper cites Barcelona Academy head Pep Segura as the biggest influence on his coaching, having worked with the Catalan at Liverpool. And he has some of the Barca precision to his game planning, famously using different coaches for work with and without the ball, almost in the manner of NFL offensive and defensive coordinators. According to The Athletic, the Welshman has also demanded that Forest practice pitches receive the same care and attention as the turf at the city ground. And if it's hard to see how that might make a difference to Forrest's play this season, it's worth looking at the results of Cooper's attitude towards fitness. Of Forrest's 72 league goals to date, a massive 47, or nearly two-thirds, have come in the second half of games. And while they've failed to net in the first 60% of the allotted time, they've only been shut out in the second half 33% of the time. Those young legs and the relentless swarming gradually wearing down the opponents, making them a nasty prospect for the playoffs. As neither the richest nor most talented team in the league, Forrest have had to find every possible edge they can to rise above their rivals. And Cooper's meticulous, clear but humble approach has unified the club and reinvigorated the fan base. No wonder supporters greet every win with a chorus of just can't get enough. For the first time in over two decades, they have a team worthy of a shirt which once ranked amongst Europe's most prestigious. So team, that was our explained on how Steve Cooper resurrected Nottingham Forest. But what are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you can't get enough, click on screen now for another great episode of Explained. Like this video and subscribe to the channel with notifications on, and we'll catch you next time.